Allison, I thought you were there till the very end. What happened to lead to you leaving WCW in 2000? Oh, uh, Diamond Dallas Page was just a sensitive bitch the whole time he worked because he had the boss's ear and got all kinds of favoritism. And I healed on him pretty hard, and he didn't like it. And we had had a bit of a blow-up backstage, and he tried to apologize in front of a bunch of people, which was just for show. Right. So when he stuck his hand out, I threw up my hands like I was being shot. I mean, robbed, excuse me. And I wouldn't shake his hand. And, you know, I always thought he got me fired. But i got to be honest, the product was so bad at that point, I was just ready to get out of there. So if you want to blame me for it, you know, that's fine. But uh, I missed, like, the last, like, four or five weeks, you know, right before WDB bought it. But, uh, you know, all the guys I work with in wrestling, and you won't find too many of a bad word to say about me, but the perfect nickname for Paige, which I used on the air, was DD Me. Because I never worked with anybody who tried to do everything for himself, who flew so high on borrowed wings. I mean, he made Hulk Hogan seem unselfish, for God's sake. At least Hogan wow. delivered the goods all the time. He was a top draw. But Paige, you know, always thought he was overrated then because of his connection with, you know, his superiors. And looking back, I have no reason to think I was wrong. <laughs> I told you, Mark, you'll always speak your mind. <laughs> well, you know, and then with this yoga, and God bless him if it works, but, you know, his, his rehab with Jake and Scott, God bless him for trying. But in Jake's case especially, I, I don't know how much it worked. And Scott's had a few relapses, too. Both those guys are good guys. I'm not denigrating them in any way. But speaking generally, guys, I tend to trust acts of charity a lot more when somebody doesn't call in a camera crew. And Didi Me, every time he did something nice for somebody, always called in a camera crew. Okay. Yeah, I never thought of it like that. I never wow. thought of it like that. I know he, he, I actually uh, had uh, some time with him in uh, Tampa after Dusty's funeral. And uh, I really like, he just got married. I really like his wife. Brenda, um, she's a great lady. Yeah, very, very nice. So, you know, we've kind of patched, we've <laughs> we've certainly had words. <laughs> but Well, no, to each their own. And I haven't talked to the guy in years, but... You know, let me tell you a story that will reflect how he just, he has no self-awareness. When he put out DDP Yoga in its infancy, like what, 10, 12 years ago? I'm currently working for iHeartMedia. At the time, I was working for ESPN Radio. And he called me up and got my producer I said, hey, I want to come on Mark's show to talk about DDP yoga. I'm an old friend of his. And my producer, you know, comes into my studio and goes, hey, a guy named Diamond Dallas Page wants to come on the show to talk about some yoga thing he's doing. He says he's your old friend. And I go, old friend? He got me fired. Tell him to F off. <laughs> and so a couple nights later, he was talking to a, a, another mutual acquaintance, Kevin Nash. And he was saying how I refuse to have him on the show. And I wonder why. And Kevin Nash goes, Paige, you got him fired. And Paige goes, you think he's still mad about that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. God, well, it was a strange time, man. I wish I'd stayed fired. <laughs> Rick, I want to circle back to something you said a minute ago. You kind of alluded to the fact that you and Paige had a falling out. I didn't know that you guys ever were cross at all. No, no I, wrote, I wrote my book. I can't remember. Actually, Mark edited my book, and Mark's the one who made my book legible. I mean, or, 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 what's him say? Readable, legible, whatever. Because I, I made it great, Rick. But yeah, the, yeah. The, <laughs> thank you. Honestly, God, okay. we'll put it this way. When you get flown into a WWE taping to meet with Ric Flair, Vince McMahon, and Triple H, and the first thing that gets said to you when you sit down is, by Vince, this book about your friend isn't good enough. Can you save it? Yeah. 
and I, I like to think I did. Uh, you did? My, my, a lot more new material. It's a great book. Got was stuff from guys like Steve Austin and, and yeah. Bill Goldberg. I conducted what, Rick? Probably in uh, two or three WWE TV tapings. I probably conducted, like, what, eight or nine interviews with people who weren't even in the book but but, but should have been quoted from the get-go. And, and if I do say so, it did turn out good. And the guy who started the process, Keith Greenberg, yeah. he put a lot of facts together, and the framework of the book was adequate. But he was writing it from the perspective that Ric Flair is just another wrestler. Well, he was writing it like I was Freddie Blassie. Every other word was F, F, F. Well, right, exactly. Yeah. Whereas, I'm not saying well, I don't use that word, but I usually don't use it all the time. You know what I mean? Well, and when you're writing a book about Ric Flair, especially his autobiography, you've got to approach from the standpoint that this is the greatest wrestler of all time. And he wrote it like he was a Bruno San Martino fan, which I'm pretty sure he was. And that's no knock on Bruno, but... You know, this is this is Ric Flair's autobiography, for God's sake. It's got to be his statement of record, and he's the best. That's the statement. Well, I mean, and what I said about Page was that he was the most overrated guy I'd ever seen in my life. <clears throat> and basically, kind of what Mark said is that he got the push from Eric, and nobody knows why or how. Oh, I'm pretty <clears throat> sure I do, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll no. segue out of that. But Rick, tell me, do you still think that Paige is the most overrated of all time? I'm a wrestling fan, and I don't think he's the most overrated. So, but I have a different perspective because I'm a fan, and you were you were in the business. Is he still the most overrated? And I assume you mean champion, the guy who carried the big belt. Uh, well, no. It's well. First of all, I don't bear anybody any ill will right now. But right, I mean, right, if you're right. asking me wrestling questions. Um. And it's. I had a great time the other day. So I, you know, I'm. I'm. No, no not the person. No, let me, I, let me, I, I no, like let, him let me finish. I, but I know sometimes that that's not the real guy I'm seeing. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, well, here's the thing about Paige Conrad. He did some really good stuff. His feud with Randy Savage was tremendous. Awesome. He got benefit of his relationship with Eric. And when the NWO was holding off the whole company with baseball bats, Paige got to diamond cut two or three of them, which was a big breakthrough for him. Paige was a competent upper mid-card wrestler, but favoritism and cronyisms would put him over the top. Is he the most overrated ever? Boy, that's... I'd hate... No, 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 that's that's definitely not the case. It's such, it's such a, you know, the business has been around forever, but, but, you know, I I never saw him as a very top guy. Well, um, (laughs) we didn't even mean to bring up DDP, but (laughs) hey, things happen when you flip the mics on. Uh, Mark Madden's here. I'll get, I'll 